similarities between seven and the meaning of the word witness or the word oath, which is spelled exactly the same way as seven in Hebrew. So you have in the Hebrew language, you have a shin, you have a bet, you have an ayin, which equals the word sheba. And we know that sheba is the literal biblical, the biblical in ancient biblical language, it equals seven, or it's the number for seven. But we also have a shin, a bet, and an ayin in other Hebrew words. And one of those words that we see a shin, a bet, and an ayin spelled exactly the same way, the same exact Hebrew words, letters that are used in the word seven, sheba, is the very same letters that are used in the word oath. So now you have a cross connect. Say it with me, a cross connect between the word oath, between the word witness, between the word evidence, and the word seven. So now we're beginning to understand that the supernatural similitude of the spirit that is correlated and associated with the number seven, it is, it is, he is associated with that number because that number means witness. That number means oath. That number means evidence. And it is the Holy Spirit that presents the evidence to us that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Somebody ought to say evidence. Blood-bought blessings. Come on, somebody. I'm coming into the seven weeks, seven cycles of seven. Somebody ought to give God praise because we're about to experience the Boaz blessing in the body of Christ. So in an exegetical sense of scripture, we see this interrelationship and this cross-connect. Say it with me, cross-connect. This cross-connect between words. And we need to understand that these words, that the word, the word Sheba, which is a shin, a bet, and an ayin in Hebrew, and the word for oath or evidence or, or witness, these, every time you see seven in the scripture, especially in the book of Revelation, every time you see seven in the book of Revelation, there is definitely seven is being used as a literary device. That number seven is not a literal number because it is repeated over and over and over again. Seven churches, seven stars, seven angels. Seven voices, seven thunders, seven utterances, seven bowls of wrath, seven years of tribulation. We could go on and on and on. So we need to understand that seven is a symmetrical symbol. It is a symbol of the spirit of God. And I don't want anybody to leave here tonight and say, Pastor, Dr. Corral doesn't believe in the seven-year tribulation. Oh, yes, I do. That is not what I'm saying. But what I am saying here from this scripture that we need to understand is that seven is, is, is used in the book of Revelation because of its, repetitive, it, its repetitiveness. It is used as a literary device for the interpretation of greater revelation. So we need to understand there is a symbolism behind seven. And we already understand that that symbolism is the seven spirits of God because we know there are not seven Holy Spirits. That is not a literal title of the Holy Spirit. It is a symbolic similitude of the Spirit. He is the similitude of seven. Why? Because seven means oath. Seven means witness. Seven means evidence. And the Holy Spirit is the one who brings us the evidence that Jesus is risen from the dead. The Holy Spirit is the one that brings us the witness that Jesus is alive. The Holy Spirit is the one that brings us, hallelujah, the evidence, the witness, the truth, and the oath, hallelujah, that he's not dead, he's alive. In order to understand the cross connect, between seven and the word oath or witness and these words that are spelled exactly the same in Hebrew, the only difference is the grammar. There is a different punctuation points in the word oath, but still used with the same Hebrew letters, a shin, a bet, ayin, and the same thing with sheba, shin, bet, ayin. The only difference is the grammar used in each one of the words so that you can tell the difference between the words. 
So we understand that this interrelationship and this cross-connect used seven being used in the book of revelation as a literary device to show us the works of the spirit and what the spirit of god is like so many of us do not know the holy spirit we're stuck in the upper room the only thing we know about the holy spirit is speaking in an unknown tongue but we know nothing else our understanding of the Holy Spirit is completely limited. We know nothing about the similitude of the Spirit and what the similitude of the church is, that we have been called to be the just like the Holy Spirit, that when you see the church, you should see the works of the Spirit, that when you see the church, you should see the miraculous manifestation of the Spirit, that when you see the church, you should see the full operation, the full manifestation of the power of God. Hallelujah. Somebody got to give God the praise here today. So that we fully understand the similitude of the spirit, hallelujah, and the, the cross connect between seven and the spirit of God. Let's go to Genesis chapter 21, and I'm going to show you verse 25, verse 28, verse 29, and especially verse 30. It's very important for us to understand that word oath, which is spelled exactly like Seven, the word oath and seven in Hebrew, with a shin, a bet, and an ayin. And that very word oath, that very word seven, sheba, in biblical language, not in modern Hebrew. Modern Hebrew um, is not, we don't say sheba, but we're seeing it here. Let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 21, looking at verse 25. The Bible says, and Abraham reproved Abimelech. Because of the well of water, which Abimelech's servants had violently taken away. Abraham is going to need proof. He's going to need to produce proof that something was his. Put your hands up right now and say, I need some proof that's able to be produced in my life that proves Jesus is risen from the dead, that he's alive that he's doing the same works that he did 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. He still heals. He still delivers. He still restores. He still saves. Somebody ought to help me out here. He still raises from the dead. He still does all of the works that he did when he walked on this earth 2,000 years ago. But we need some evidence. We need some infallible proofs. And now we know that the proofs are produced through the oath that God made in the symbol of seven through the Spirit of God. He is the proof producer. Somebody ought to give God the praise and give God the glory. Here we see it in Genesis chapter 21 verse 25 and Abraham reproved Abimelech because of the well of water which Abimelech's servants had violently taken away. Verse 28. The Bible says in Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. Why is Abraham going to set seven ewe lambs in the flock by themselves before he makes a covenant with Abimelech and his servants who violently already took away his well. He needed to prove that the well was his. He needed to prove that there should be no more strife over this well. This is my well. This is a well my servants dug, and I have to produce the proof that it's my well. So he's going to produce the proof by setting aside seven. Touch your neighbor and say, God is going to produce the proof by the symbol of seven revealed in the similitude of the Spirit of God. Somebody ought to say he produces the proof that Jesus is the healer. He produces the proof that Jesus is the deliverer. He produces the proof that Jesus is breaking your bondage. He produces the proof that Jesus has given you a destiny, that Jesus has washed you from your sin. Somebody got to help me out here. And Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. Verse 29 says, And Abimelech said to Abram, What mean these seven ewe lambs? Why did you set them by themselves? Verse 30 says, and he said, these seven ewe lambs shalt thou take of my hand that they may be a witness. Touch your neighbor and say, the Holy Ghost is the witness. The Holy Ghost is the true witness. Somebody ought to say, I need him to be the witness in my life. 
that Jesus is alive. I need him to be the witness to the world. Signs, wonders, and miracles, demonstrations of the Spirit that prove that Jesus is alive. Somebody ought to give God the praise. And he said, for these seven ewe lambs, thou shalt take of my hand, and thou sh that they may be witness unto me that I have digged this well. So seven is the witness. Seven is the proof. Seven is the evidence. So now when we see the symbol of seven, we need to understand it's not some superstition. We're not talking about some lucky number. We as Christians don't believe in witchcraft. We as Christians don't believe in superstition. We don't believe in luck. We don't believe in fate. We don't believe in chance. We believe in the power of providence and we do not believe in coincidence. Nothing's a coincidence. Everything is providentially prepared in advance by the hand of God. Somebody ought to say, I believe in my God, hallelujah. Now we need to see verse 31, which is one of the keys of Genesis chapter 21, because it shows us the similitude of seven and the oath. And the scripture says, wherefore he called the place Beersheba, because they swear both of them. Beer in Hebrew meaning well, Sheba meaning oath or witness, well of the witness, well of the oath. Uh, verified by seven ewe lambs. Why? Because seven and Sheba are interconnected. They cannot be separated one from another. Somebody ought to give God the praise. Hallelujah. Say this with me. The supernatural similitude of the Spirit in the church and in my life. Let's look at the role of the Holy Spirit now that we understand what it means because we understand that he is always associated with seven and we understand that seven is the symbol and the similitude of the spirit specifically and especially in the book of revelation that all of the supernatural characteristics and all of the sevens where we see the church is involved wherever we see seven and the church we understand that that takes on a similitude a likeness of what the church should be like so let us look first of all at 1 John chapter, four, uh, chapter 5 verse 6 and we're going to see the Spirit of God as the witness. The Bible says, and it is the Spirit that beareth witness because the Spirit is true. That's why he's associated with seven. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 15, last line says, whereof the Holy Ghost is a witness to us. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 4 says, also bearing them witness with signs and wonders and diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost in the symbol of seven is the one who bears witness with signs, wonders, and miracles. So that means in these 49 days of destiny, seven times seven, I'm about to experience an outpouring of the Spirit. I'm about to experience signs, wonders, miracles. I'm about to see the dead raised. I'm about to see people healed in their bodies. I'm about to, somebody ought to give God the praise. Hallelujah. Is anybody here hungry for more of the Holy Ghost? Doesn't anybody here want more of the power of God? Don't you want more of Him? Don't you want to see things you've never seen before? Don't you want all of the manifestations and operations of the Spirit to be poured out in your midst? Somebody ought to say amen. Somebody ought to praise Him right now. Let me just explain to you, dear people of God, so very important to understand why we need the Holy Spirit. And when we look at the book of Revelation and we see the symbol of seven, we realize we haven't even tapped in to most of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We've only known the upper room and that's all that we know. 
We know nothing more than speaking in tongues or just laying on of hands or falling out in the spirit. We don't understand that there's so much more that the Bible tells us. Hallelujah. That is your inheritance. That is your destiny to walk in through the power of the spirit. And in these 49 days of destiny, I'm about to tell you, you ought to be asking God for more revelation and more manifestation of the spirit of God. Somebody ought to give him praise and give him glory. John chapter 14, verse 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. Say this with me, the witness, the one who bears the witness of the Son. John chapter 16, verse 13 and 14 says, How be it he, when the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself, but whatsoever things he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. Touch your neighbor and say, don't think I'm strange if the Holy Ghost starts telling me what's going to happen tomorrow. Don't think I'm strange if the Holy Spirit shows me in my dream what he's going to do with my son next week. Don't think I'm strange if God begins to talk to me and tell me what he's got planned for me a year from now. Don't think I'm strange strange if the Holy Ghost shows me something about my business or shows me something about my family. It's my inheritance because the Spirit of God is going to show me things to come. Somebody ought to give God the praise. We, we've institutionalized the Holy Ghost made him just into God knows what. We've only known just a portion of his great power. And most of us don't even know that he's a person. This is why Jesus made it a point on the night that he was betrayed. Before the Feast of Weeks begins. Remember, Jesus was crucified during Passover, but the first day of Passover was the day of the Last Supper. The second day of Passover was the day he hung on the cross, and that begins the Feast of Weeks. Somebody ought to say he died and he rose during the Feast of Weeks. The Holy Ghost came after seven weeks. He came on the 50th day, Pentecost. I don't know if you're hearing me or not. So many of us, beloved, only know the Holy Spirit through an it, as an it, or as a feeling. We have used the Holy Spirit as a feeling, or we've used the Holy Spirit, and we've called him and lowered him down to an emotion or just to a demonstration. When we have not known him as a person, and Jesus made it so clear on the night that he was betrayed, getting his people ready for the seven days. Hallelujah. Not only the seven days of Passover, but for the seven days of seven weeks. Hallelujah. Times seven weeks for the pre preparation for the coming of the Spirit. And he taught them. And every place you see Jesus presenting the Holy Spirit, you see the personal pronoun he. This is why the Bible says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, in John 14, 26, whom the Father will send in my name, he, not it, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. In John 6, 16, verses 13 and 14, you have the personal pronoun used nine times. Somebody ought to say nine charismatic gifts, but so many more, hallelujah, that are more than just the charismatic gift. He is mentioned nine times. Somebody ought to say he's not just a power, he's a person. How be it he when the spirit of truth is come? He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of him, himself, but whatsoever things he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me. He shall take of mine and show it unto you. Touch your neighbor and say, the Holy Spirit is a person, not just a power. So that means 
What is required to know him is much more than just speaking in an unknown tongue. What's required to know him is yieldedness. What's required to know him is to become his instrument, to become surrendered. And you need to know the personality of the Holy Spirit. So many of us have confused the ministry of the Holy Spirit with the works of men. First of all, I want to tell you, he will not share the glory with anyone but Jesus. He's not interested in any name except Jesus. This is the only name that he will honor. This is the only name that he will glorify. Jesus said he will glorify me. That means the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to glorify, lift up, and exalt Jesus as he shows us. And as he witnesses to us, he's alive. As he witnesses to us, he's doing the same works that he did 2,000 years ago. Somebody ought to say, I need the Holy Spirit because I need to see Jesus. I need the Holy Spirit because I need to touch Jesus. I need the Holy Spirit because I need to feel Jesus. I need the Holy Spirit because I need to be delivered by the power of Jesus. So we understand, dear people of God, the Bible tells us he is the witness. And as we look at the book of Revelation, we understand that everything in the book of Revelation is in the symbol of seven. Why? One of the reasons, one of the many reasons why is because seven is the symbol of the spirit and seven is the manifestation and the revelation of the realm of the spirit. What you want to know about the realm of the spirit is found in the book of Revelation. Touch your neighbor and say, if you want to know what the spiritual realm is like, read Revelation. Come on, somebody. If you want to know what walking in the spirit is like and what the realm of the Holy Ghost is like, read the book of Revelation. That's why the Bible says seven spirits of God four times, because seven shows us the similitude. Hallelujah. And we need to understand Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. I want you to see it. The Bible says, let's go to it very quickly. John, hallelujah, to the seven churches. Here's what we need to see in verse 4. Very important. He says, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace and peace be to you from him who was, who is, and is to come, and from the seven spirits of God. Now, what we need to understand is John is now correlating and associating the church with seven. He said, John to the seven churches. Now, we know there are many more churches than just seven. We have, uh, throughout historic Christianity, and very wonderfully marked from the seven churches in Asia Minor, which is now Turkey. It's a little strip of land. It's uh, several thousand miles where seven churches were planted by Paul in Asia Minor. And we need to understand that these churches um, were on the main Roman roads, one of the great things about the Roman Empire and the Romans was the fact that they built so many roads. And this was to the advantage of the preaching of the gospel because this one road was one of the primary Roman roads, which made it very easy to preach the gospel during ancient biblical times during the Roman Empire period. So we find that very easily seven churches were planted on this easy road. But I want you to know there were not just seven churches. Paul did not just minister to seven churches. There were churches outside of the seven that are spoken of here in Asia Minor. He had churches in Thessalonica. He had churches in Corinth. He had churches in, in Rome. There were churches all over the world. So why is the Bible saying to the seven churches? Does it just mean that this letter is only applicable for seven churches? No, we need to understand that seven is the similitude of the spirit. And the scripture is showing us that the churches should have the similitude of seven we should have all the operations and all the manifestations of the spirit operating in us that means we shouldn't lack in the anointing we shouldn't lack in the power we shouldn't lack in the signs and the wonders we shouldn't lack in the supernatural manifestations of the spirit we shouldn't lack hallelujah in the gifts the operations the manifestations the revelations of the spirit in the church seven 
churches, the similitude of the church 